Hello, well, thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. And today I am doing my first haul of 2020. So a lot of these books are ones that I actually got in December, but I just never got around to hauling, sorry, doing a haul video in December. And so I'm doing it now. So off we go. So the first one that I got is one that I did buy this year, but it only cost three pounds. <laughs> it's not too bad. Um, this is one that I didn't think would appeal to me, but I'm actually reading at the moment a book about death row. And somebody on a doctor's forum that I'm on um, works as a prison doctor. And um, she said that this book was pretty much how it is working as a prison doctor. And I was just interested. So when I saw it was £3, I was like, boom, let's buy it. <laughs> um, so this is the book. This is called The Prison Doctor by Dr. Amanda Brown. Um, so basically, as I said, she works as a prison doctor. She's written about her experiences. Um, I'm wondering if it's going to be a little bit like Adam Kay's book without so much humour. But um, it's not written as diary entries. But I'm just really intrigued like to see what it's like um, from uh, in another doctor role. I assume she's a GP. I don't know if she's a psychiatrist or a GP, but I guess it will become clear. Yeah, so I'm just interested to um, hear what it's like doing her job. The next ones I wanted to mention um, were a gift, very kindly, from um, lovely um, Charlie Brick, who has her own YouTube channel, which I will link in the description box. And she so sweetly sent me um, a book. Well, she asked me if I'd like um, a book that she has read. Um, and then she, when I opened it just today, um, she'd put in like a little card and an extra book for me. She's so sweet. And um, so thank you, Charlie. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and so the first book is this one, I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. So I've mentioned several times before that I've got a few Maggie O'Farrell books and haven't read anything by her yet. But I did hear a lot of praise for this book um, when it came out. So this is a non-fiction book about her brushes with death. I think it's nine of them. Um, I'm just trying to... No, it doesn't actually say, it just describes it as a, a memoir with a difference. Um, oh, 17. 17 brushes with death. So, yeah, that's quite, that's more than a cat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm enjoy I'm looking forward to reading this and um, and finally trying some Maggie F. Owl. And then the little, um, the little book that she sent along with it, it's, it's a really tiny little um, short story called uh, The Forester's Daughter by Claire Keegan. Um, it's really pretty as well so I shall read the back um, so these are basically um, short stories which are rediscoveries of um, classics from Faber um, for their 90th year and this says um, the, the story takes us into the heart of Wicklow countryside and the farming family of Victor Deegan with his three teenagers the milking and the mortgage when Deegan finds a gun dog and gives it as a present to his only daughter, his wife is filled with foreboding at this seeming act of kindness. As the seasons pass, long buried family secrets threaten to emerge. So it sounds really good. So thank you again, Charlie, so much. The next one is one that I found in a charity shop in December and it's a little bit battered, but um, I got it because I watched Heather. Um, do Believeathon um, last year and I really loved all the books that she talked about and she vlogged and this was one of them and um, it really drew me in when listening to her vlog about it and um, luckily I can't remember that much about what she said now which is good because I don't want to spoil it um, and it is uh, Goodnight Mr Tom by Michelle McGorian so I know this is like a, a, a classic British book um, that most people will have probably read I'm very familiar with the title um, but I haven't read it myself and it's about a little boy who gets evacuated during the war and he begins to flourish with the family that he's been sent to um, and then his mother wants him back. I think that's sort of it in a nutshell. And um, Heather said it is like there's quite a lot of sad um, bits in it. I think I remember her talking about like um, how this boy's mum like sellotapes her baby's mouth shut so that she can't cry or something like that. Something really awful. Um, so I think there's going to be some hard bits in it. But I'm hoping because it's a children's book it's going to still have a happy ending. And fingers crossed. <laughs> so the next book. I'm not really sure like 
what it's about but it's an author that I've heard lots of people mention on booktube that I'm intrigued by and I have um, a book well I don't have in um, the village I live in there is a book swap that um that a lady puts at the end of her driveway she just has like a little cabinet of books and you can drop off whatever books you want and take whatever you want and there's no money that takes part in it at all um and i love walking down there with the kids and having a little look what's on their shelves um and this is one of the ones i found so this cost me nothing and um it is called um white is for witching by helen oyemi so I still don't actually know what it's about, so I should just read the blurb to you. Um, so it says, In a vast mysterious house on the cliffs near Dover, the Silver family is reeling from the hole punched into its heart. Lily is gone and her twins, Miranda and Elliot, and her husband Luke, mourn her absence with unspoken intensity. All is not well with the house either, which creaks and grumbles and malignly confuses visitors and its mazy rooms, for forcing winter apples in the garden when the branches should be bare. Generations of women inhabit its walls, and Miranda, with her new appetite for chalk and her keen sense for spirits, is more attuned to them than she is to her brother and father. She is leaving them slowly, slipping away from them, and when one dark night she vanishes entirely, the survivors are left to tell her story. So it sounds like sort of magical realism, and I think she is, uh, I think there was some sort of fairy tale um, kind of basis off into her stories i believe um yeah so i'm looking forward to trying her it's another new writer to try so the next books i'm going to mention yeah the next books i'm going to mention are all books that i got for christmas which is really lovely so i didn't ask or one of them for my birthday but i got it at christmas so i kind of you know what i mean so so um i didn't actually ask for any books and that's because I've got such a huge TBR that I thought I'm not I'm gonna resist and if anyone gets me vouchers or whatever then awesome. But these are the ones that I got. So this book I'm so excited to read and it's from my lovely friend Shona. She got it free for my birthday. And so it is called The Wild Remedy by Emma Mitchell. And um it is like super beautiful. I'll show you the pictures. It's got lots of little hand painted illustrations and photos inside so hold on um do you like that inside um it's so sweet and it's got some really lovely photos in as well and this is a book so the author is non-fiction the author has suffered from depression for a long time and she uses um nature and walking as her um as her therapy really and um, so this is an illustrated diary and she basically um writes about how her body and mind respond to nature and it's written in um, months of the year and each month it's got about what wildlife is around in that time period and she's made drawings and photos and paintings um of everything that she sees so like that and stuff so i'm so excited to read it and I don't know whether to read a chapter each month or whether to read it all in one go. I shall see. But um, I, mean, I was we, me and Shana went to a Waterstones event and we saw it on the shelf and we were both like, "Oh, that bit looks really good." And then she went back and got it for me. It's just so kind. And so um, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, so that's great. Then I got a present from lovely Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read. She sent me this um, and again I saw this, her talk about this on her channel and I was really excited by it and then um, I said that I was really excited by it and she sent it to me which is so kind. I just feel like in this video it just shows how kind lovely booktubers are. Um, so that is um, If Women Rose Rooted by Sharon Blackie. So this is um, a book about... Um, how women find their place in the world drawing inspiration from wild landscapes basically i've just lifted that off the back cover and it talks about um wise and powerful women in native mythology guidance from contemporary role models who have rerouted themselves in land and community and taking responsibility for shaping the future so i love um stuff about nature and women and fe uh, feminism and um wildness and this makes me like I love the word rooted as well I just love like I think about it a lot in yoga like when we're um 
kind of connecting with the ground and all that kind of stuff and um yeah so i'm really excited to read this as well and um i'm very happy that charlotte was lovely enough to buy it for me so thank you very much charlotte uh, the next one is a children's book that um, I read at school and I've wanted to reread it ever since and I want to have a copy because I remember how much, um, I just remember it really fondly from school and um, my husband got this for me and this is Carrie's War by Nina Borden. So earlier this year I found The Peppermint Pig by Nina Borden in a charity shop and bought it because that's another one I really remember from childhood. And this one is about um, Nick and Carrie, who is another wartime evacuation story. And um, so they've been evacuated from London to Wales. And they um, it says they find little comfort in their new home with strict Mr Evans and Auntie Lou, his sister. And then um, they visit another, another ref not refugee, evacuee, um, who lives with a lady called Hepzibah. And she's rumoured to be a witch and she does delicious cooking and the children can't keep away from her. So, um, yes, I just really look forward to reading this again. And it's only little, so I'm sure it won't take me long to read. But it'll be really lovely that I can then read it with my children when they're a little bit older. Okay, so um, the next one is um, one that my friend uh, Rachel sent me for Christmas. And um, this is... A non-fiction book which is called Peaky Blinders the Real Story by Carl Chin so um, the real the true story of Birmingham's no most notorious gangs so I absolutely love Peaky Blinders it's one of the best things I think I've ever seen on TV and it has a little bit to do with the fact that a certain uh, Tommy Shelby may be somebody who occupies my brain for quite a bit of the day <laughs> um, and this is yeah this is the book about um the real peaky blinders so i would ne i wouldn't normally have bought myself this but i'm really intrigued to actually to read it and there's quite a lot of photos in there as well which is nice because you can then picture the people that it's talking about so um yeah so and it's actually got pictures in here of people who were featuring Peaky Blinders, like Billy Kimber is in Peaky Blinders and he is also in the book. So yeah, so that will be an interesting one. And then the final two, so I am a um, member of a group on Facebook for um, f for women doctors who we have a sort of like online book group and there are sort of book discussions of specific books but we also just post about books we like and every year we do a secret santa that one of the girls organizes and um you basically go on this website called elfster and it allocates you another person to buy for and we have a, a limit of 20 pounds you can make a wish list i did put a few books on the wish list because i think it's really hard to buy for people who you don't know at all um, you can have secondhand books, new books, whatever you like. And the two, so um, the person who was my um, Santa, who I don't obviously know who it was, picked two books for me. So one is um, a book that has been extremely popular on BookTube, and um, everybody has either read it or knows about it. And that is Daisy Jones and the Six um, by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, so this is a fictionalised. A fictionalised account which is written as if it's non-fiction about a band um, in the 1970s which I think is um, supposed to be based on Fleetwood Mac and um, I've heard lots of really good things about it and I'm really looking forward to reading it. And the second one, I'm not actually that sure what it's about but I remember um, Charlie Brick reading it and saying how she thought it was absolutely stunning and she couldn't stop thinking about it so I put it on my list and they bought it for me so and that is um boy swallows universe by trent dalton so again i'll do a blurb read because otherwise i can't tell you what it's about but i love the cover it's really lovely and i love bright covers and it's got a really nice bright spine so uh it's an utterly wonderful novel of love crime magic fate and coming of age from one of australia's most exciting new writers Brisbane 1983, a lost father, a mute brother, a mum in jail, a her heroin dealer for a stepfather and a notorious criminal for a babysitter. It's not as if Eli's life isn't complicated enough already. He's just trying to follow his heart, 
learning what it takes to be a good man, but life keeps throwing obstacles in the way, not least of which is Tyson Bros, legendary drug dealer. But Eli's life is about to get a whole lot more serious. He's about to fall in love and he has to break into prison on Christmas Day to save his mum. So, yeah, sounds sounds good. I don't, I haven't got a lot of Australian writers, so, um, yeah, um, looking forward to that one. So, that is my list. Uh, that is all the books that I can now shelve um, that I got in December and the beginning of January. So, let me know if you've read any of them on the list or if you'd like to read any of them. Thank you so much to everybody who um, sent me a gift, whether you watch books you or not. Thank you very much. And um, I will be back soon with another video. Bye!